Hello, booktube. Um, I just wanted to first off say that last video I did was quite depressing, so um, apologies for that. Um, but, I mean, I was talking very blah about Raymond Chandler and Bukowski and Agatha Christie. Ugh. I was down. But today, what I would like to talk about is something different because the other day, um, I can't remember if it was on my comments or if it was on um, Michael's comments, but um, Michael from Knowledge Lost <clears throat> um, was talking, oh my gosh, it's so windy. So outside was not working, so um, I will try from in here. Um, my computer almost blew off my railing, and that would have been a drop. So, um, but yeah, so anyway, uh, Michael was talking about Naked Lunch, and I'm like, I left a comment, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I love Naked Lunch. And then he said, but why do you love Naked Lunch? And I'm like, oh. And one of the things that I notice that I do is I get really excited about something. And especially when I'm talking about more than one book in a video, I get totally excited and I just like burn the house down. I'm like, and I really don't explain um, why uh, I like certain books the way I do. So um, I thought I would remedy that by talking about um, two writers that um, hold a special place in my heart that I talk about quite frequently, but I don't think I actually talk about their work as much as um, I should. So I want to talk about um, Charles Bukowski and William S. Burroughs because I like them for two different reasons. And, but really it's the same reason. And, um, a lot of it has to do with me being a writer. In fact, if I wasn't a creative person, I don't know if I would like Burroughs' work, um, Naked Lunch and Beyond, um, because I think that's kind of a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people. And Bukowski, um, it might be the same way with Bukowski, unless I was a complete alcoholic, and then maybe it would, like, make a little bit more sense. But let me explain um, why I feel the way I feel. Um, both of these writers have been able to take um, the form of autobiographical stories and turn them into fiction. And I know a lot of people are like, well, that's what everybody pretty much does. But there's a difference because um, especially with Bukowski's novels, um, and I finally finished all of them, um, the Henry Chininsky character is him, and, like, he changes some names of things, and I'm sure he embellishes some stuff, but the point is, is that he makes it feel very real. And... I think that William S. Burroughs did that the exact same way when he and Jack Kerouac wrote And the Hippos Were Boiled in Their Tanks, when he wrote Junkie, and when he wrote Queer. Um, 
like I look at those three books as they're telling a story the same way as I look at the five Chinensky books. And then you could throw Barfly in there too if you want. Um, but the thing that made Burroughs different for me... Actually, let me backtrack a little bit. William S. Burroughs came from a very wealthy family. Okay, and he didn't really have to worry about a whole lot. Um, but he decided to slum it in order to kind of become a writer. And um, in doing so, he got hooked on heroin and all sorts of other stuff. And it got to the point where he was just a junkie, basically. Bukowski, on the other hand, came from an extremely poor family and had to, like, kind of dig and crawl the way a lot of, um, especially Americans do. I don't have, like, a very broad concept of how social social classes work in other countries, but I'm, I'm sure it's pretty much the same. Um, and he dug and he scraped and he stole and he fought um, and he drank and it wasn't until he was like 50 before he actually became like a published author and so his whole career probably lasted 25 years but it was like the last 25 years of his life. So um, there's that difference. Now, with in relation to me, I feel like I was born into a family that was like Bukowski's family, but then was like put into a family that was like Burroughs' family and lived that way for a period of time and then ended up back into the Bukowski family structure. And, um, I don't want to get into like my personal, like deals with my family or anything like that. But so with that said, like, I feel like I could see both sides of that fence. Now, um, with the Bukowski's Chininsky books, you have Ham on Rye. Um, let's see, what was the one that comes after that? I guess it was um, Factotum, then Post Office, then Women, then Hollywood. And that's not the order they were released in, but chronologically, I think that's the way... Um, they went. And if you read those books, it tells a perfect story of his life. Um, and like with Ham on Rye, I remember when I did the review of it, I was saying like, this is like really close to home. Like a lot of the things that happened in this book happened to me. Like I did these things. And um, so that was just crazy and then in factotum it's about having like a million different odd jobs and i've done that um and hated every one of them and felt like it was sucking the soul out of my life um and then in post office he spends like a decade working at the post office and i had a job that i spent about 10 years of my life at um and just knew i was going nowhere it was like, if I stayed at that job, that's what I would do the rest of my life, you know? And then after that, I went full bore into um, creative works. And that was about 2007, 2008, 2007. And um, I've been doing this ever since but 
the thing with the women, like, I have, like, dated the same types of girls that he was dating. Like, um, every crazy story he told, it was like an old friend sharing those tales back and forth. So, with all of that said, I don't know if... If you can't relate to those books, if those books would be as important to you as a reader. Now, what um, William S. Burroughs did with um, like Naked Lunch and on, probably until like the 80s or whatever, um, he kind of created this world he kind of created this world that was his world and the character that was him was Lee um, William Lee or Bill Lee um, but that was basically him but in his world like, Lee was important. Lee was like a agent or some type of spy, like some type of, like, if you've ever had a dream where you had, like, a very important role in something, whether it's you having superpowers or you being in, like, the CIA or something like that. We've all had dreams like that, probably. Um, so he had this, like, alter ego in his dreams. And that's kind of what, like, I wrote this novella called Unsane Sam, and that's exactly what that's about. Um, that was like one of the first things I ever wrote. But anyway, so he taught me how to take everyday experiences and turn them into riveting adventures, if that makes any sense. And so when you're reading Naked Lunch, like, yeah, there's a lot of, like, what does he call them? They're not scenes, they're... Um, fuck. It starts with an R. I can't remember what he calls them. But anyway, so there's all these different scenes um, batched together to try to make some sort of narrative. And if you have the, um, the edition with the restored text, there's even more of that. But there are some characters and... Um, Things like obviously Inner Zone, um, the place where a lot of the stuff takes place, um, is Tangiers, and um, that's where he spent that period of his life. And it was basically a city where it was full of all different types of people, you could get any kind of drug you wanted, you could sleep with anyone you wanted and nobody cared. It was like a very very open-minded place that he really enjoyed. And the idea of having an interzone um, was probably like the most and I'm sure there's many other authors that have done this, but it's like super surreal and it taught me how to take something in my life that maybe I don't even want to talk about to anybody. And by changing little elements of it into other things, I could write about it, I could talk about them, I could share about them, and it makes it not only acceptable, but it gave me the opportunity to 
open up and create. So, um, and Naked Lunch was the first Burroughs book I ever read. And when I read it the first time, I read it straight through. And then I started, like, just going through it random. And um, I read that book... I mean, I don't know how many times I've read it in a row, or like, but I've read chunks of that book so many times, like, it just, it was very important to me, because I think I would have, like, completely fallen apart if I didn't have a way to get, um, the thoughts in my head out, and, um... So, that's just between Bukowski and Burroughs. Um, I have always felt like I could do that. So, anyway, um, that's not exactly me going over the literary aspects of all of those works. But, um, that's basically why I love those books. And, um... To be honest, with the whole um, cut-up method, especially with the Nova Trilogy, I really wish um, there was... Uh, if you guys know if there is, I would love to know about it. But if there is a uncut-up method of um, the soft machine, the ticket that exploded, and the Nova Express. I would love to read those alongside the cut-up method versions of those. Um, but anyway, um, that's how I feel about those things, and hopefully that was um, insightful to you. So until next time, everybody, I did that. <laughs>